Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. Sangamo Therapeutics is working to translate groundbreaking science into genomic cures. Well, Jason Fontenot is joining us here as Senior Vice President and Chief Scientific Officer to talk about cutting-edge science on the frontiers of genomic medicine and some promising treatments for genomic diseases. Welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you for joining us, Jason. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to uh, to talking about our work. Well, let's uh, let's start a bit with your professional background, if you would. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as uh, Chief Scientific Officer and Senior Vice President. Sure, sure. So um, I uh, I work at Sangamo as as uh, Chief Scientific Officer, which means that I'm uh, in charge of the kind of preclinical research and technology platforms at the company. Um, I am a uh, an immunologist by training. I uh, received my PhD from the University of Washington in Seattle, studying immunology and using uh, genetic tools, genetic engineering to study uh, the immune system. And so uh, that 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 is one of the things that brought me to Sangamo was uh, my expertise in immunology and some of the work that they're doing that maybe we'll talk about later on a, a population of cells called regulatory T cells. Um, but after, after graduating from, uh, with my PhD, I, uh, worked at a, a few places, including, uh, Pfizer, uh, in Connecticut and, uh, Biogen in, um, Massachusetts in Boston. And then for, uh, a couple of companies, smaller companies in the Seattle area doing, uh, cell therapy, uh, a company called Juno Therapeutics, which was focused on, uh, CAR T cells and oncology and a company called Immusoft that was focused on using uh, B cells, the cells that produce antibodies, to produce uh, protein replacement therapies. Um, and then about four years ago, I joined Sangamo initially as head of cell therapy, um, and then a couple of years in, I was promoted to uh, chief scientific officer. What's the company working on, on currently uh, as we head into this new year? Yeah, so Sangamo... Um, the company Sangamo is kind of founded on a, a platform technology uh, called uh, zinc finger proteins. And what is incredibly interesting and cool about zinc finger proteins is that they are a family of proteins that have evolved in humans to uh, recognize DNA in a sequence-specific manner. And uh, the scientists at Sangamo over over the uh, last many years have figured out a way to basically create zinc finger proteins that can identify and bind to any sequence in the genome. And using this technology, we can direct um, different kinds of um, molecular functions to those to those targets in the genome, and and that allows us to manipulate uh, gene expression in ways that are potentially uh, therapeutic to um, really some important and devastating diseases. Um, the company has a pipeline that is primarily focused in two areas. One area is autoimmune disease, and in that area we engineer uh, a population of cells called regulatory T cells to prevent a patient's own immune system from attacking its body because that's the nature of the autoimmune disease. Um, and the other area that we're really focused on is um, genomic engineering of the central nervous system to treat uh, diseases like neurodegenerative diseases or autism spectrum disorders, uh, really uh, uh, very uh, devastating and important diseases that at the moment often have uh, few or no therapies. So those are the two main areas that we're focused on, but we also have a few other programs uh, in the clinic uh, in the later stage that um, we are really excited about, including a program uh, to treat hemophilia uh, that we have partnered with Pfizer. Mm -hmm. We also have a, a program um, uh, to treat sickle cell disease. And lastly, we have a gene therapy program to treat a disease called Fabry disease, and all of those are in the clinic. Uh, patients are being treated. We have exciting results from those. Um, and then the fourth uh, therapy that is in the clinic is one of our uh, engineered regulatory T-cell programs um, where we are treating patients who receive uh, kidney transplants in order to help uh, preserve 
the transplanted kidney and protect it from the uh, rejection. Is that program also in which stage of, of development is that program in? Yeah, the uh, the engineered regulatory T cell or uh, CAR regulatory T cell. So we use a term called CAR, which stands for chimeric antigen receptor, mm-hmm. which uh, is um, is an engineered protein that we uh, put onto the surface of the cells so that we can target them to different tissues in the body. And in the case of the trial that I just mentioned, what we do is we engineer these regulatory T cells to recognize the transplanted kidney that the patient receives. So we take the person's own um, immune cells, in this case, regulatory T cells, we engineer them to recognize the transplanted kidney, and then after the patient has re- received their transplant, we infuse these cells into the patient, and what happens is that the cells uh, can migrate to the kidney, and there they encounter the protein that they are engineered to recognize, and they expand there and become activated, and they act to protect the kidney from attack by the patient's own immune system, which is how uh, transplanted organs are rejected. So the regulatory T cells regulate the ability of the immune system to to attack the kidney and stop it from attacking the kidney. And the hope is that it will preserve the kidney without the patient having to be on more kind of global immune suppression or uh, systemic immune suppression, which is a, is a problem because it um, exposes the patient to susceptibility to be uh, to, to develop, uh, you know, chronic infections, mm-hmm. um, and 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 so it's not a not an ideal way to treat a transplanted organ compared to the CAR regulatory T cells that are targeted specifically and only towards the kidney. Do you think that that technology can be translated to any type of transplant? And where do you think that the field of genomic medicine is going into the future? What do you, what do you think is next? Yeah, so <clears throat> that particular approach, the regu- engineered regulatory T cells, is not only useful for transplant, but could also be used uh, probably more importantly in a lot of autoimmune diseases, um, thinking of things like rheumatoid arthritis or multiple sclerosis or type 1 diabetes. These are uh, diseases that really impact uh, lots of people. And so that's where we're, we're heading with those programs. And, in fact, we have programs at the moment that are targeting both multiple sclerosis and inflammatory bowel disease. But the other really exciting area that we're working on are these in vivo genomic medicines where we deliver our uh, genomic engineering tools directly into the patient using um, kind of recombinant viruses. And this is really, I think, the future of medicine because these uh, these tools can very specifically target uh, genes and gene expression and, and work to correct defects uh, uh, permanently they have the potential to essentially create cures for some of these diseases. So what we're talking about here are kind of what people call one one and done therapies. You get treated one time, it corrects the problem, and you are, you're essentially cured from the disease. An example of that is the, the therapy that we have for sickle cell disease, where we are uh, correcting the, the mutation that causes sickle cell anemia. And um, if, if, it, if it works correctly, then the patients really will never have to be treated again. Well, give us a website where our listeners can learn much more about the developments that uh, that are going on there at Sangamo. Yeah, the company's website is www.sangamo.com, and that's spelled S-A-N-G-A-M-O. Um, and there you can find overviews of our technology platform as well as uh, uh, many of the programs that are moving uh Either or, that are either in the clinic or moving towards the clinic. We also have a lot of exciting collaborations with uh, with other other companies, including Biogen, Novartis, and as I mentioned previously, uh, Pfizer. Well, I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio, Jason. Thank you. Nice talking to you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Jason Fontenot. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.